we're deeply honored that God would use us as a servant. If you've never had it happen, it's a very humbling experience. Uh, needless to say, I needed a lot of it in my life. Humble was not something that you would use to describe me. So God has really, really done some changing on me, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> this started about Tuesday, so if I get a lot, little long, Anna, go start the car. Y'all just give me this right here. We're just excited for the opportunity to minister to your, to your people, to, to, to God's people, to the people of Fountain of, Fountain of Life. We just, we're just so excited, glad that God would use us. I appreciate Pastor Stacy for asking us. Uh, we ask you to turn to Romans chapter 12. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. Very familiar scripture. I'm going to get a little twist on it. This is all access, all access pass. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, that every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to stand before your people, God. We ask you to help us to edify and uplift your people in this church, God, to lift your name up, to glorify your name and your word, God. We ask you to help us to speak not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a seat. I picked Paul because Paul really speaks to me. I'm going to use this scripture, but I'm going to go somewhere that you may not be used to. It may get a little shocking, but trust me, I'm going somewhere, okay? Just stay with me. It might take a minute. The Apostle Paul was probably one of the best little Hebrew boys, Jewish men. He even went on to talk about what a good guy he was and how he kept all of God's laws. And notice there was no rebuttal in the Bible or the Word of God to speak against what Paul said. He kept the laws. Can everybody hear me on that? Everybody getting me when I say that? Paul wrote this, freshly converted into the Christian thing. He hadn't been four, five, six years, depending on whose book you read. Yeah. He was a Jew. He was a Pharisee. And he talks about this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. For a Jewish man to make that statement about you and me is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm going to draw a picture for you of Paul when he was a little boy. When Solomon built up the temple, there were some things that he put around it. Uh, there was gates. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but we're going to talk about some things just so you can get a hold of what Paul wrote and what this actually meant and how he could say that and how important this is to each one of you here today. On each wall of this temple, around the walls of the temple, there were gates. And there were some gentlemen there, and I had a preacher come to my church and preach on the porter, the heavenly porter. And boy, he really tore it up, and I'm probably not going to do it justice. But for a minute, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. At each one of those gates, there was a man called a porter. And I'm not trying to show my worldliness, but I've been to bars, and I've met some of the people they put at the doors at the bars to deal with people that come in that they don't want in there. Okay? As crude as this sounds, the porters around the temple were there to keep the people that were undesirable out of the house of God. There was actually a sign, a warning, if you will, and they would kill you if you went in. There was a sign at each one of the gates. If you were a Greek, if you were anything but a Jew, if you were not holy, if there was something unclean about your life, Pastor Stacy, you were not allowed into that court. You did not get in. That porter would break your legs. He would not let you go into the house of God. That being said, Paul would walk in 
with his daddy, with his mommy, going in. Of course, mom had to stay out. Sorry, ladies, but that's the way it was. She had to stay in a special little spot on the inside of the walls. And then daddy would go in, and Paul would stand there. Whoa! Paul would stand there with his daddy, and he would watch the lamb go, and he would take it up to sacrifice. And this lamb during the Passover, I don't know if I'll get it all in tonight. Y'all pray for me, because I'm telling you. This lamb had been in his home for four days. Anybody got kids in here? Raise your hand. If it's four days in your house, it belongs to you. Can anybody hear me in the building? If it spends four days at your house, it belongs to you. If it's a cat, a dog, a monkey, a chicken, if it's in your house for four days, it's yours, Cleve. You better own it. He would go and probably upset, a little bit mad at his daddy for taking this lamb on the Passover. And they would watch it and they would stand there. They had little, little things set up where they'd tie the lamb down and wait for their turn to go before God. Or, well, the priest. The priest would come in and he'd look. But I'm going to tell you a secret about this. They were already in. They were already in. The priest was just doing a precursor inspection. And as a matter of fact, he didn't even look at the daddy or the little boy. He just looked at the lamb. Uh, Y'all didn't hear me. I'm going to say it again. He didn't look at the daddy or the little boy. He looked at the lamb. He looked right at the lamb. And it was accepted and then taken and sacrificed. I, like I said, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to get through that. I'm excited about this. I'll get it all out. The lamb was already in the temple. It had already come through the porter. The Bible talks about the porter even later on in the New Testament describing it like the Holy Spirit calls him a porter. They had already made it past the checkpoint. They had already got into the temple. They were there. The sacrifice was going to be accepted by God because their access into the temple, past the gates, past the porter, past the signs, past all the things and the, and, and, and the writs and the laws and what you could or couldn't take into, you know, you're not supposed to leave your iPhone outside to turn it off. Don't bring the DS in. It's got a volume all the way down. You might know what I'm talking about in this church. Come on. All these things had already happened. So the sacrifice was going before God. What sense would it make once you get there to start doubting what the sacrifice meant? Whether God would accept it. How many people have ever went before God and the first thing the enemy does is start picking your sacrifice? It tear it down. Oh, you, you, I know you got mad at the gas station yesterday. You can't, there's no way. God's not going to receive your prayer. Yes, He will. He's not looking at you. He's looking at the Lamb. Our access to God is so incredible. And for Paul to write this down, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. A Jewish man calling you holy. Hey, you better write that down. Wait a minute. It's already wrote down. You know how? I'm sorry. Excuse me. He called you holy. Holy. How, do you, how is your body presented holy and acceptable before God? How does that happen? Well, I know what I'm made of. Chances are you're made out of the same stuff. God's not looking at you. He's not looking at you. He's looking at your lamb. If you go before God and you can't get that grace, and you can't feel that hug, and you don't understand that love, and your praise is just knotted up inside of you, you must have left your lamb at the door. Bring him in with you. Let him have free reign in your life. I went many years as a Christian, saved, going to heaven, and didn't fully understand what it meant, Stacy, to just give it over to God. So many people, we want to deal with addiction and we want to deal with problems, but we want to use these hands. Hey, these hands don't got no holes in them, y'all. They ain't going to do nobody no good. The only way these hands will work is if they're like this or like this. If you got them like this to the world, you ain't helping. God wants to use you and you have access, all access. Paul, for him to say this as a Jewish man, you have to understand how ingrained that would be in your life. I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to understand how to express tradition in a place where you don't know the tradition. 
But think of your traditions, your, your family traditions that you do on holidays, the things that you do traditionally. I thought that was beautiful, the offering prayer. That was fabulous. Hallelujah. That's a tradition at your church. If you don't do that, when you, when you, you probably think, oh, we should have done that. Which there's nothing wrong with tradition. It's a good thing. But Paul's traditions weren't all good things. He had been taught what a dog he was. You're awful. There's no way you're going, God doesn't want you. You're just lucky he ain't killed you yet. Might as well just, you just be quiet for the rest of your life. The devil wants you to think that God has nothing to do with you. If he can keep you that way, you will never stand before your God. And you'll never receive the call. You'll never receive the strength. You'll never receive the direction that he has planned for you. Because that lamb has to spend time at your house. It must be at your house. You must know your sacrifice before you take it before the God that has set up this temple. It ain't gone. The temple's still there. When Isaiah went before God in chapter 6 and he seen the cherubim singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And he went in there. I had a picture of that, Stacy, one time. That's where Jesus went when he died. And he took his blood before the Father. He stepped right in where Isaiah was and poured it on the mercy seat for you and me. Granting access to each and every one of you in this church today. I know that's kind of hard to hear. It ought to excite you. Think about it. God has given you access. And that little, eh, you feel on the inside, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's your flesh or that's the enemy. Needless to say, both of them are lying to you. God has called you. He told the children of Israel before Sinai that He wanted to make them a a, a nation of priests and kings who has access to the presence of God. Oops. He had that plan all the way back then. But because of what they thought and what they wanted, it kept them from that presence. Do not deny yourself access to the presence of God. You will receive strength there that you have no idea how well it will make your life. How strengthened you will be in your spirit. What it's going to do for you. What it's going to do for your relationships. What it will do for your, just for your job. All access to the throne of God. You have it, church. Each and every one of you. That's the only way you're going to get this message out. Is to go stand before God like Moses did and come back and get among the people. They're going to wonder what's wrong with you when you go traipsing through with the glow on your face and they don't even know, oh my God, what's wrong with that man? He's been spending time with God. People ought to be able to tell that. If they can't tell that, you need to go find, you may not be spending time with God. You may be spending time with yourself. That was a little low. I'm sorry. I pulled him. Be careful for nothing, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. How are you going to get what you need from God? I know y'all know Mark eleven twenty three. 23. You ain't going to get by me that quick. You got to talk to him. And he don't have a cell phone. You ain't on Facebook. I mean, if that's all you got, I'm sure the Holy Ghost will come and visit you and He'll teach you better. But that's not how it works. You must present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Well, Brother Richie, I don't know how I can do that. I'm not very holy. Well, we already know that because I'm made out, like I said, of the same stuff that you are. Your lamb grants you access the one that's supposed to be spending time at your house. Oh, God. Them four days before Passover, could you imagine what the children of Israel felt like stand, waiting in anticipation, wondering, you want to talk about some access? That lamb spelled freedom for them. Access into the promised land. Now, we know later on because of the stubbornness and the hardness of their hearts, they spent 40 years in the middle of nowhere because of it. But the excitement of that lamb some of those children that sat there and partook of that meal were the ones that went in. Maybe Joshua and Caleb got to eat a little bit of that, and they said, well, we can't wait. 
We're so excited. We got this lamb. Oh, God's going to deliver us tomorrow. And 40 years later, you still wonder. You have access. The change will be in your attitude, not in your behavior. Hey, the change will be in your attitude, not in your behavior. After the attitude change, some people are so scared to death that you're going to give people, just like Creflo Dollar says, a license to sin. You've been sinning without a license your whole life. I'm quoting Creflo Dollar. It's his. I can't take credit for that. That's a funny one. Your attitude must change first. Then your behavior will change. You have to come broken before your God. You have to be fully able to receive from Him and to do that you must be emptied of what you think needs to happen. You must be emptied. Hebrews 4 and 6 Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. Underline that. Put a little highlight on your Bibles if you got one. Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. How are you going to get mercy? Well you have to come boldly to the throne of grace. And we may find grace to help in the time of need. Some people are looking for grace and mercy. And, you know, Jesus left us a bunch, according to what he said, right before he left. My peace I leave unto you, my peace I give to you. And then apparently there's some extra up there at the throne, Stacy. So if you're looking for grace and mercy, I've got a map. And that's a secret. Don't tell nobody. But you can get right to it. And the way you measure that in yourself is how you feel about others. We have to let God be the one to teach us how to feel about others. Your access will be greatly damaged by your attitude. We've already covered this. But looking at other people, looking down at them, thinking, oh, I can't believe they did that. Who do they think they are showing up? They ain't been here in six months, and I guess they think they're going to take the offering up too, just like always. <laughs> Rest assured, that's not the Holy Spirit speaking in your heart. That's your flesh wanting to judge somebody, wanting to stab somebody, poke them and get gouge. Give me something. You know, That's the devil working on you. Oh, but you, I'm not brother, I don't know about that. No, I'm telling you, because I know, because he done told me some stuff like that, because I had more of that in me than I'd be willing to express here tonight. You take care of your problems, but you give out grace and mercy. God has called you to do that. We are the ones, we're his hands and feet on this earth. I got another one out of Chronicles talking about the porters and he set the porters at the gates of the house of the Lord that none which was unclean in anything should enter in this was written in Chronicles because there was a woman that was called Alethean I think that's how you pronounce it she had come through the house of God and went through there hollering and squalling and throwing an awfulest fit that ever was so after that they put porters for security in God's house Jesus and I, it's so funny how God just, I mean, he draws a big picture and you just got to sit back and take it in. A lady that I know that I spend time with, when she goes to my mom and dad church, very wise lady. I, I appreciate her, her, her comments and her prayers. She asked the question, why did Jesus, after he cast them out of the temple, tell them not to even come through with dishes or vessels across? And, you know, we ask those questions. And we all have opinions and thoughts why we're vessels of clean and unclean. I believe, here's my opinion, this is my opinion, Jesus wanted people to continue to have honor for the picture that God had drawn in that temple. So when He came, it would be fresh in their minds to understand how blessed they were to be able to walk right up to the throne room right up to that mercy seat, right up to the place where God is residing in heaven, the throne room. Boldly, you got to go. But you can get there to the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy. Whatever you need, you just go right up, walk in. I know you, hey, y'all got to know this. Right up. Yeah, but you don't, I don't care. Right up. But you don't know, yeah, just zip it. Right up. 
to the throne of grace, you have access. Jesus said, now listen, you're not going to use this. You're destroying this. This picture, stop it. We're going to give it correct honor. That way people understand and know what a big deal it's going to be when I die on the cross. When I give you redemption. I preached this the other day. Do you know how incredible your redemption is? Yes, we do. No, I'm telling, listen, the angels, the angels, the angels, and one more time, the angels want to look into what you got. Now let me go ahead and give you a picture of that. The angels, it's the same angels. The same angels that stood there when God hung the heavens. Hey, when He formed the worlds, when He created the sun, when He bent down and made man. Same angels want to see what you got. You have access to the throne of grace. All access. But you must believe that you have that access. Because until you believe that the blood of Christ is sufficient to cover all your sins, you will not take Him to the temple of God. You will not take Him to that place of prayer. You will not put Him in, to God before you, and you will not get that covering that He has for you. You have to be obedient. You have to be faithful. You have to be believing in the blood of Christ. You must believe you have access because of what Jesus Christ did that's what's going to turn people around that's what's going to change lives that's what people's going to say I need to see what them people's doing there's something going on over there I, I mean don't get me wrong I like to run and holler too and jump up and down but they just think you're crazy and that's okay because I am a little bit <laughs> just a little bit but that blood, hey, I'd like to be able to just walk by people. Holy Ghost told me one day, there's a boy over at work, and he, bless his heart, the devil had his grips in him good, and, and I know he did. And, 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 you know, I had got a little check there when I got around him, and I tried to minister to him a couple different times, and his mouth was so bad, so foul. Just, I mean, he, he, just, he would build a wall of profanities and ugliness around him. And I was working one day, I was, I'm a mechanic. That's my part-time job. I was a mechanic, and the Holy Ghost said, go over and touch him. And I kept working. You know, doing something, you know. Holy Ghost, go over and touch him. <laughs> go over and touch him. Ching! I threw my tools down, and I walked straight over there, and I walked up to him, and I said, hey, buddy, how you doing? Like, hey, he never cussed another time. You must be able to believe that God has sent you as a messenger from His throne. You, hey, you got to believe it. Now, I didn't go over and tell him, now listen here, I ain't going to put up with that mouth. No, that don't work. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's your flesh. When you leave the presence of God and you believe and you're obedient to what God has told you, there's a, the, here's, the, here's the factor. Here's the part. Real Bible faith, real Bible direction... Here it is. Are you ready? Works. <laughs> Every time. If it didn't work, it's not God's problem. It's not His fault. But in that, we lay in condemnation. Well, I guess God's done. Like that song, He ain't done with you. Well, I guess that's just not my calling. No, maybe you need to look at it different. Stand up and say, okay, God, I'll take my licks. What you got for me? My baby girl, when she gets in trouble, she's kind of got a little bit of her daddy in her. She don't want to talk to me for a little while when she gets in trouble. But you know that hurts me. And when your children do you that way, it hurts you. You don't want them to be mad at you. If you do, here's the altar. We'll all pray for you. You, you need some. Just go ahead and go on a sidebar. When you have that, and you feel bad, and God, if you being earthly fathers and mothers, I'm, I'm letting the Bible define itself, you being earthly fathers and mothers know how to give good gifts. If it hurts you, what do you think God feels like when He tells you not to do something and you spend a week not talking to Him because you don't feel worthy? Well, God, I can't talk to you today. You don't understand. I've done some stuff, and I got mad, and I showed myself. and well, He already knew that. 
He knew that before the foundations of the world when he was with God and they said, you know what? Let's make man in our own image. He already knew today was going to happen. He's not surprised by our behavior. Sometimes I'm surprised by my behavior, but God's not surprised by your behavior. He is ready, willing, and able to forgive. When you go before Him in that throne of grace and that glory shines down on you, sometimes it may reveal some things you didn't want to see. But here's the thing. You don't have to worry. He's not going to look at you. He's looking at your lamb. I keep going back to that. That's the point of it. All access pass to the presence of God through the Lamb of God. You are the people of God. Men and women called according to His purpose. You can stand up, talk to somebody, tell them about Jesus. Believe that God's going to fill your mouth. Don't sit at home filling your mind full of junk and worry and all, oh gosh, I don't know. No! That's the enemy. Learn how to stand against Him. We've been called as warriors. We're going to take back this city. But we ain't going to do it on the couch. It's not going to happen watching, you know, I don't even know what this TV shows are now. American Pickers, it ain't going to happen. That's my show. I'll step on my toes. And don't get me wrong, we all need leisure time. I'm not up here preaching against that stuff. But... Sometimes we get a little, it's just, like, it's just like dessert. Everybody likes dessert. Some of us like it a little bit too much. There's nothing wrong with dessert. God give me a wonderful wife that is beautiful and she loves me. And I'm, I, I thank and praise Him every day for that because I really don't understand why she's married to me. But the Holy Ghost does, so that's all I'm worried about. He doesn't want me to not love her. He doesn't want you to not have a good time. He doesn't want you to not do things. But if what you're doing is not working, perhaps you should change your process. If every time you step out to witness for God, you get shut down, here's the thing. Change it. Either change what you say, change what you think, change how you feel, change how you act. God has mercy and grace, but you're going to have to go to Him to get it. You have access. I know y'all's heard this. It's in here. Ephesians 3 and 12, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. Talking about Jesus. We have boldness and access with confidence. You have boldness and access and confidence. I struggled with a confidence problem for the biggest part of my life. While I was a young man in high school, and even when I was a young man, when I was in my early 20s. Doesn't matter how smart you are, if you don't believe that God wants to use you, you're never going to be able to speak with the wisdom that God has called you because you're going to waste your time defending what you say if you don't believe that God has called you. What a perfect way to jam you up for the rest of your life is to hit you with insecurity to hit you with doubt, to hit you with fear. Oh, but it's okay to worry a little bit. No, 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 it's not. Whatever's not of faith is. Somebody's heard that before. God has called you to be emissaries for Him. I said this one night in my church and kicked my shoes off and about put a hole in the wall. You, think of it like this. You, you, every one of you, you are representatives you are real estate agents but the property that you're selling you can't see it here the property that you're showing you can't take them there all you can give them is a picture you are a real estate agent for the God of eternity you are a real estate agent for heaven and what you're showing people is supposed to be a picture of what heaven's going to be like How many people could take the mirror out and say, Yes, I believe that. Got quiet on Anna, start the car. (laughs) To be able to go and be that person, you must go before your God. 
Because when you go before your God, He'll fill you up. He'll fill you up. He'll humble your heart. He'll change your mouth. He'll change your life. He'll change what you think of yourself. But you must go before Him boldly to His throne and believe that you have access. Don't get there and stand in line with everybody else at their lambs and start thinking, well, now, you know, I seen Him last week down there at the such and such and... Well, my lamb looks a little smaller than his. You already made it past the porter. You're in the temple. you got access. Don't get in there and jam yourself up. Don't be sabotaging what God has set forth. Your lamb will be sufficient when you get there. But you must get there. And I'm not talking about works to save you. I'm talking about being able to get lined up with what God's got for you so you can receive what He's got. That anointing, that blessing is only going to come when you get your head right. Anybody ever seen crazy people anointed? Did you listen to them? Do I need to answer them questions myself or can we just leave it at a giggle? You must be lined up. You don't think everybody out there that says some off the wall thing God ain't tried to use? All perfect knowledge, all good knowledge comes from God. All of it, church. All of it. Now, the other stuff, you know, we know where that comes from. But He has made opportunities for each and every one of us. You are all called to be His servant. Every one of you. You've been called. The difference between the called and the used is the attitude. And I'm not just talking about a bad attitude. I'm talking about an attitude of doubt, an attitude of insecurity. If you can't go before that throne, you're not going to get your purpose. You're not going to get your direction. You're not going to get the anointing. It's not going to come. One time, I, I taught youth for a long time at, at the same church I'm pastoring now. And, and sometimes they'd have me preach on, teach on Wednesday nights. And my wife is a lovely woman, and she can ask me questions that nobody else can. Pray for me. <clears throat> sometimes I would teach and it'd be Cleve man it'd be oh my gosh it'd come out and I'd woo you know I'd get excited and then sometimes I'd teach and it'd just be barely, I'd be lucky to get out of there you know I mean we'd be everybody whoo my goodness Anna said one day at the house why is it not like that every time I began to do some research and I found out some shocking things about myself I didn't believe that God would use me. I didn't believe that I was worthy. Well, in myself, let me go ahead and clear that up. I'm not. But I have a lamb. Can everybody hear me? I have a lamb that has gained me access into the temple. I have walked by the porter and he never gave me a second glance. Because he looked at my lamb and he knew, hey, whatever's wrong with this old boy, whatever he's got, Whatever problem he's bringing here, whatever sin he's committed, that lamb is sufficient. I'm going to let him go through because of his sacrifice. And I finally realized that that was what I needed. I needed to understand that God wanted to use me. God wanted to cleanse me. God wanted to save me more. He wanted to use me and fill me and let me bless his people. And when I realized that, you know a lot of things that everybody told me was going to be hard stopped being hard. I know, it hurts. My goodness, I'm sorry. You know, a lot of the things that people, oh, Brother Richie, now you just don't know. No, that went away. I got a whole new set of problems. Which they're not really problems, but a whole new set of responsibilities. All that stuff that people tell you to worry about is distractions. Can y'all hear me? Can this church, can y'all hear me? All the stuff the enemy tells you to worry about and the people you run into is distraction. You have access to the throne room of God Almighty. I don't care if your power bill's late. Go to your God in faith. Hey, God, do I need to change my spending habits or are you going to send miraculous money? Whichever way you're going to do it, I believe you're going to change my situation. A little bit quiet. <laughs> Fill in the blank, church, whatever your problem is. You have access to God. Well, let's see. God made the world. God made me. God made you. The flowers and the trees. The birds that sing. What's your problem again? Seriously. What's your problem? Put it in your mind. Where are you at right now, church? 
Where are you at right now? Go there. Go there. Be in that place that your mind's trying to go anyway. Go there right now. Everybody in this church, if you've got a place that your mind's trying to take you, go there. Now think of your lamb. Hey, think of your lamb. Think of what that gives you access to. Think of where that takes you. Think of what He's going to do for you. Think of what He wants to bring into your life and use you to do. Imagine what kind of deliverance He's going to give you. Everybody stand. We're going to pray together. Everybody stand. We're going to pray together. We're going to believe that we're standing in the throne room of God. And you just went in with your sacrifice. You went in to your almighty God and you stood there. And you're right there with your sacrifice. And your lamb is standing there. And he is holy. He is acceptable. He has taken all your sin. He has put it down. He's destroyed it. He's taken all of it out of your life. And you're standing there before God. And he says, what can I do for you? I'm not going to make it out of here, y'all. What can I do for you? My, it feels selfish, Richie. Go ahead and ask him anyway. Don't worry. He'll tell you if it's selfish. He'll let you know if it's out of line. That's why you tell him. Sometimes you need to eat the fruit from these lips. God, I'm mad. Well, he can work with that. Quietly staring into the abyss. He's not going to do much with that. You must speak to that God you believe in. Believe that you have access. Everybody raise your hands. We're going to pray to our God. We're going to all pray together because we've all been made a nation of priests and kings to stand before our God. Pray about that problem. Pray about that person. You've got all access, church, to the Almighty God. He has called you into His presence. He's waiting with open hands, open checkbook. He's got the Holy Ghost there ready to pour it on you. Whatever you need, He's got it. All access to go out and minister to His people. The broken ones that really need Him. He wants you to go. He wants you to be a witness in this community. Thank you, Lord, for Your people. Thank you, God, for Your anointing. Thank You for Your Word. We come to You, God, in the precious name of Jesus. We bring this Lamb before You as a sacrifice. And we know, God, that it's able to cover all sin and take care of any problem that we have. And we ask You, God, to bring all these people, the, the situations in their life, God, the misgivings, the misunderstandings, the, the lack of unity, whatever frustration may be in their life, God, their physical ailments, their financial problems, their psychological problems, God, we ask You to take this lamb as a sacrifice and give us grace and mercy to move on through and come out on the other side. All access, God, you've given us to you, to your supply, to what you have. We thank you, God. We know you're able. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's able, church. He's able. He's called us all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the throne room. You're in the throne room right now as you pray to your God. Standing before an almighty God like Isaiah. You don't even have to have a cold touch your lips because your lamb is sufficient. He is sufficient. And when you get in that presence, it might hurt a little bit, but He's going to change you. He's going to move. He's going to work on your life. Oh, He's going to change your heart. He's going to fill your mind. Believe it, church. Believe it. God is able. God is able. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. This is the Word of God. The Lamb. From Genesis to Revelation. The entirety of the Word is centralized in the concept of the Lamb. John the Baptist said, This is the Lamb of God taketh away the sins of the world. And that land, Christ Jesus, is sufficient 
to give us all equal access to that throne that he preached about. The ground is level at the cross. We all stand on the same footing. We all stand with the same sacrifice. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This morning, a sinner saved. A backslider came home. New converts baptized in water. Tonight we heard a fresh word. But now I would need to ask the question yet one more time. Have you accepted the lamb into your house? Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. He's the lamb. You need him in your house. Because without him, you have no access. And some may say, well, I hear you, preacher, but I've taken him up on that before, but yet my life hasn't really changed. I keep finding myself back where I've always been. I'm asking you to forget about religion forget about protocol forget about what other people's expectations are and just get a hold of the lamb and let the lamb get a hold of you I don't know everybody's spiritual condition actually I don't know anybody's true spiritual condition only my own So I ask you, where do you stand? Or where does the Lamb stand in relationship to you? I want Him right by my side. I'd hate to think that I would be called into judgment with no Lamb by my side. No blood sprinkled on my life. So are you here tonight, lost, lonely, alone, scared, doubtful? Push aside all of those emotions and just come in full surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you, He will save you. Truly you will come with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. He'd be a liar if he didn't save you. How about it? Heads bowed and eyes closed. I ask you. Will you do what Bill did this morning? And just come home? Will you do what Stephanie did? And just make a decision. I'm getting out of sin. And I'm coming to a Savior. Whatever your condition is, Jesus is here. I'm just going to give you about 10 seconds. I don't believe in prolonging things and begging people to do what the Holy Spirit hasn't convicted you to do. How about it, sinner friend? How about it, backslider? How about it, just lukewarm Christians? That's a dreadful state in itself. Father, we've heard your word tonight. And with grateful hearts, we have received it. And with grateful hearts, we praise you for it. I thank you for the man of God that brought us this word tonight. Lord, though I 
barely know him socially, I feel we have a kindred spirit one with another because we belong to the same family. And I speak your blessings upon his life and upon his home and upon his ministry and upon his church. Lord, I know that he's my brother. And I want you to bless him. And I speak your blessings upon him. Wisdom, anointing, favor, financial blessings, physical strength. God, may you bless him coming in and going out, rising up, sitting down. Bless him in the marketplace. Bless him in the farm. Bless him in the field. God, wherever and whatever he puts his hands to do, may it be blessed of you. Thank you for your people that are here in this house. Go with them this week. Into their homes, into their jobs, into the mines, wherever they are. Into the hospitals, the, the classrooms, offices of administration. Lord, wherever your people go, may your anointing go there. May your light shine in darkness through us. And when we come back again, may our hearts be ready to celebrate all the good things that you have done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, Mercy Revival folks, we need to see you in the fellowship hall briefly. If you could just go out, make a left, you'll be in there. We won't preclude anybody from, uh, uh, from, from our little discussion that we're going to have. Uh, and we'll feed as many people as we can. God bless you. Have a great night.